are recording. Wonderful. I'd like to welcome you and call to order in our January 12th Port Orchard City Council meeting, first meeting of 2021. And uh, pursuant to the governor's stay home, stay safe order, the city council will be conducting this meeting via Zoom. And that the meeting invites with phone numbers and a, a link to join this meeting were published on our website. So members of the public have the ability uh, to join us this evening. So, um, I, and now I've amended this agenda because I kept missing the Pledge of Allegiance and it's in bold red letters. So, uh, so I won't miss it anymore. And so, so please join me in the pledge. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Not being in the chambers and having the flag there, it just, it's, it was just, I don't know why, I kept missing it. So, we took steps to correct that. All right, so we have an agenda um, that was presented and I think we need at least one amendment to that agenda. Councilmember Kachardi. Yeah, I would like to add um, item number F to the consent agenda in excusing Councilmember Diener um, due to work. Um, there's some flooding out there and he was called to uh, do an inspection. He may join later, but uh, we'll go ahead and excuse his absence at this point. Second. Second. I a motion by Councilmember Kachardi and a second by Councilmember Rosenpepe to excuse Councilmember Diener for business reasons this evening. And that's been added to our consent agenda as item F. Any further discussion of that amendment? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And the, raising the hands helps too, uh, since we're on video, so wonderful. Uh, anybody opposed? Okay. And uh, so that motion carries to add council member Diener to the, uh, his excusal to the consent agenda. Any other modifications that you would like to see to this evening's agenda? If not, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the agenda as modified. Second. A motion by council member Plasson, a second by council member Lucarelli to approve the agenda as amended. Any further discussion of this evening's agenda? If you're not all in favor of approving the amended agenda, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, the agenda has been set for this evening. We are to our first citizen comment period and that citizen comment period is for any items on our agenda this evening. So if anyone wash, wishes to uh, address the council, just uh, raise your hand or speak up and I will call on you. And you have uh, three minutes to address the council for items on the agenda. It's a second citizen comment period at the end of the uh, meeting for all other items. So anyone wishing to address the council this evening? Seeing none, I will close the first citizen comment period. We are to our consent agenda. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. I was a motion by Council Member Claussen and a second by Council Member Rosa Pepe to approve the amended consent agenda. Any further discussion of the consent items? None, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the consent agenda has been approved. We, are, we don't have any presentations. We don't have any public hearings. And now we're on to our business items. And the first is uh, an exciting move. We've got uh, a new employee who is our new code enforcement officer. And per our code, her, uh, by resolution, you need to approve of this action. So Mr. Bond, this is yours. Well, I think you covered most of it, uh, Mayor, but under Port Orchard Municipal Code Section 2.64010, the code requires that the City Council appoint the Code Enforcement Officer by resolution. And Katie Caseda, who is our new Code Enforcement Officer, is here tonight so that you can see her face and wave. And um, she's been working hard with HR and our previous Enforcement Officer, Doug Price, to get up to speed. And you will start seeing her more and more 
out in the community. So uh, the staff recommendation is to uh, approve the resolution as presented. And uh, I, if anybody has any questions for Katie, I'm sure she uh, can tell, tell you a little bit more about herself. Um, we did hire her away from Port Townsend and uh, I still haven't had time to sit down with her and get to know her as well as I will in the coming days. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So I got to spend about an hour with Katie uh, last week and I was thrilled to make her acquaintance and she, she did some time on Bainbridge Island before she was at, uh, on, uh, at Port Townsend. But Katie, maybe, would you like to tell, tell the council a little bit about yourself? Um, sure. I've been in, um, worked for municipal government for over, I think, 22 years now. And I started at Bainbridge in the police department and then moved on to public works and planning and um, was a permit tech for Bainbridge and then moved on after the recession to the city of Seattle and became a permit tech for the city of Seattle and, um, and then got hired by Port Townsend as their first code enforcement officer. And so for the last four and a half years, I've been focusing on learning um, a new career and um, I'm excited to get to apply the skills that I've learned um, for the city of Port Orchard. Well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Lucarelli. I move to adopt a resolution appointing Katie Casada as the city's code enforcement officer. Second. A motion by Councilmember Lucarelli, a second by Councilmember Claussen. Anybody else want to grill Katie before? <laughs> Other than just to say welcome also. Thank you. Thank you. you. I'm excited to be here and I'm looking forward to working for the city of Port Orchard. Excited to have you. All right, with that, we have a motion and a second to, uh, for with the resolution to appoint our new code, enforce, code, code enforcement officer. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, it's unanimous. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, we are on to our second order of business, which is item B, the appointment of a mayor pro tem for 2021. And I think that's Clerk Reinerson. Yes, good evening, council, mayor. So historically, at the first meeting of each calendar year, the council nominates and appoints a mayor pro tem for the current, from the current council members. As a code city, the council can biannually or period periodically appoint a mayor pro tem. The statute reads as follows, um, RCW 35A.12.065, pro tempore appointments biann biannually at the first meeting of a new council or periodically, the members thereof by majority vote may designate one of their mem um, one of their number as mayor pro tem or deputy mayor for such period as the council may uh, specify to serve in the absence or temporary disability of the mayor or in lieu of thereof in um, the council may also as the need may arise appoint a qualified person to serve as a mayor pro tem in the absence or temporary disability of the mayor. In the event of the extended excused absence or disability of a council member, the remaining members by majority vote may appoint a council member pro tem to serve during the absence or disability. The council desires to continue, um, as I understand it, with annual appointments for a mayor pro tem. Therefore, staff recommends the council recommends a council member to nominate a mayor pro tem to serve for 2021. Council member Lucarelli? Yes. Um, I move to elect uh, Councilwoman Beck Ashby as the mayor pro tem for 2021. And um, I would like to add that um, this is kind of an unusual year, just like 2020 was. And I'm looking, um, I thought it would be great to have someone with historic knowledge who has some time to spend if need be. I'm not sure of the mayor's schedule, but I think this year promises to have um, quite a lot going on. And um, Mr. Clausen also has this historic knowledge, but I think Beck has some time and um, her involvement with the finance committee and transportation um, also makes her ideal for this year, I believe. I'll second it. 
A motion by Council Member Lucarelli, a second by Council Member Clausen. Council Member Aspey, do you uh, accept that nomination? I would be glad to serve. It would be a pleasure. It was tough duty this last year. I think Jay ran two meetings. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for letting me off easy. <laughs> I think COVID. Nobody got to go. <laughs> So, uh, so we have a motion and a second on the floor, uh, nominating Council Member Beck Ashby as the Mayor Pro Tem for 2021. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Congratulations, Council Member Ashby. We are on to item C, adoption of an ordinance ratifying the, the suspension of portions of Title II pertaining to traffic enforcement due to COVID-19 emergency response and relief. Ms. Archer, this is you. Thank you, Mayor. Council members, um, this evening before you is an ordinance which would ratify the temporary suspension of portions of Title X pertaining to traffic enforcement that occurred from the, for the period of April 2020 to June uh, 15th, 2020. Uh, beginning in early April 2020, as the pandemic was um, beginning to ramp up, the mayor reassigned the city's parking enforcement employees to emergency management duties. Um, in addition, the mayor, at the mayor's direction, the public works department secured from use, I believe with bags, um, pay parking stations and meters that were located in city owned uh, and operated pay lots. The effect of these two acts was to uh, suspend provisions in Title 10, Chapter 12, pertaining to parking enforcement. Specifically, fees for those paid parking lots were waived, and the enforcement of certain restrictions pertaining to those lots. And other parking issues specifically enforced by the parking enforcement team were thereby suspended since the, man, the, the, the person power was reassigned. The remaining members of the police department continue to enforce uh, sections of Title 10, Chapter 12, particularly those pertaining to emergency response, public safety, ensuring disability parking was preserved. So by this ordinance, uh, again, the council has the, the sole discretion over the, or, of, over the code. And um, in order to ratify and, and um, confirm the mayor's emergency action, the council may by ordinance ratify those actions, thereby suspending and confirming the suspension of those provisions in the code. So the, before you this evening again is an ordinance. The ordinance identifies the specific provisions in the municipal code that were suspended for the period of April 1st to June 15th, 2020. And adoption of the ordinance would suspend those, uh, would ratify the suspension of those provisions. I'm happy to stand for any questions. Questions for Count Ms. Marsh or for uh, Ms. Archer, or is there a motion? Councilmember Cicciardi. Mayor, I move to adopt an ordinance ratifying the suspension of portions of the Title 10, Chapter 12, pertaining to traffic enforcement due to COVID-19 emergency response and relief. Second. Motion by Councilmember Cicciardi, a second by Councilmember Chang to uh, ratify the emergency response related to COVID and parking. Any questions uh, for myself or for Ms. Archer? Just felt it was the right thing to do to bag the parking meters and, not, and reassign those folks to emergency response early on during COVID. So with that, all in favor of approving this ordinance, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the ordinance is approved. We are on to item D, which is adoption, adoption of a resolution amending resolutions num number 067-20 for the purchase of stern drainage utility remote control flare, flail mower for the equipment revolving fund number 500. This kind of seems like Groundhog Day. <laughs> it is Groundhog's Day. So on December 15th, 2020, the City Council approved resolution number 067-20 for the purchase of a storm drainage utility remote controlled flail mower in the amount of $61,160. However, the applicable sales tax was inadvertently omitted from that approval as this was a purchase through the HGAC by roster, a consortium out of Oregon. This resolution increases the approval to include the applicable sales tax, which is 
staff recommends approving a resolution, thereby amending resolution number 067-20 to approve the purchase, again, of a storm drain utility remote control flail mower in the amount of $67,160 through the HGAC by roster for equipment rental and revolving fund number 500 in addition to the fleet. Councilmember Lucarelli. I move to approve a resolution, thereby approving the purchase of a storm drainage utility remote controlled flail mower in an amount of $67,000 through the HGAC by roster for equipment rental and revolving fund number 500 in addition to the fleet. Second. A motion by Councilmember Lucarelli, a second by Councilmember Ashby. So the only change from last time is just that we've included sales tax. All right, everybody comfortable with that and clear? There are no questions? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The resolution is approved. We're to item E, which is adoption of a resolution approving the selection of a preferred site for the South Kitsap Community Center. Mr. Bond. Yes, thank you. On December 8th, 2020, the City Council reviewed a recommendation by the South Kitsap Community Event Center Steering Committee for a preferred site location for the South Kitsap Community Event Center and directed staff to prepare a resolution approving the site selection. The site, as shown on site option A on exhibit one of this resolution, is the current location of the Kitsap Bank. The staff recommendation is to approve the, recommendation, the resolution as presented. Thank you. Councilmember Clausen. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution approving the selection of site option A on exhibit one as the preferred site for the South Kitsap Community Event Center. Second. Motion by Council Member Clausen, a second by Council Member Cacciardi uh, to approve the site selection process and the site selected for the South, new South Kitsap Community Event Center. Any questions uh, for myself or Mr. Bond? Council Member Ashby. I had asked this earlier, and I believe there was a discussion by the selection committee, but do we know if the public facilities district will accept leased property um, as part of our project? I don't have an answer to that question. You did ask that of, of me earlier today, and it's something that we would need to uh, research. From the preliminary discussions I've with and had with Noah today, I, um, I don't think we have a problem, but I'll confirm that with the Public Facilities District. Yeah, I'm very um, pleased with the selection and the process that went through to get this selection. Um, just want to make sure that we had dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's. Thank you. You bet. Other questions related to the site selection? And I know we've got another business item related to a letter of intent next, and I've got some additional information I'll share there. So, other questions? Hearing none, all in favor of uh, approving the site selection of the Kitsap Bank property, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the uh, resolution is passed. We're on to item E, which is the adoption of a resolution. Uh, no, I'm on item F. Uh, uh, authorization for the mayor to sign a letter of intent with Kitsap Bank related to the purchase of the 619 Bay Street. So earlier this evening, uh, the, uh, the property located at 619 Bay Street has, was selected as the site for the 24,000 square foot facility known as South Kitsap Community Event Center. This facility is part of the long-term downtown master plan that incorporates Kitsap Bank's new headquarters, residential and commercial parking solutions, and waterfront reclamation. The city would like to submit a letter of intent to the bank, which sets forth the city's intent to enter into a uh, purchase and sale agreement for the property. So, uh, we recommend that the city council authorize the mayor to sign this letter of intent uh, with the bank related to the purchase of 619 Bay Street. So, this letter that's in your packet uh, has been approved. Charlie, our, our attorney prepared it. It was uh, reviewed by the bank's attorney and, and has approved, been approved by to form by their board and the bank president. 
um, but they w didn't want to sign it until after the city council uh, had authorized uh, my signature. This letter is non-binding. It just says that we're going to work together towards a purchase and sale. It's more for the public facilities district because we had kind of a hiccup in the beginning here where the development community in this, as it was re related to this master plan project, selected the 7-Eleven site for the community center. Uh, when we took the handoff of this, uh, because it, a, a private uh, developer can't accept public facilities district. It needs to be a governmental entity. So we've stepped forward as that public partner uh, with the public facilities district. And my first order of business when we did that was stopped and talked to the property owners at 7-Eleven, uh, uh, the Velis family, and I was informed the property wasn't for sale. So we had we went through the process that you're aware of, surveyed our community, uh, community identified a site, and this is to reassure the public facilities district that we have a willing seller and that we're going to negotiate uh, a, pur a purchase and sale. We, we've got a lot of unanswered questions and details before we ever buy this piece of property. And it's going to start with an appraisal so that we have a value for the property um, to propose a purchase and sale. Our, our ILA right now with the public facilities district calls for us to do a feasibility study right now and Rice Fergus Miller is recommending that we don't do that until we have a 30 percent design because our feasibility study right now would be speculative and not based on what the actual square footages of the spaces are what revenue will have a better understanding of what revenues can be generated from the facilities as we get farther along in the design so right now i'm asking the public facilities district to, to amend that ila to slide that feasibility study farther down in the process um, we've got uh and got to get answers and negotiate a lease you know that with this property the bank's property is uh, currently the bank is sitting on a D part of it is sitting on a DNR lease and the bank is willing to assign that to us. Uh, I've got confirmation of that and we need to negotiate either an assignment or our own lease with the, with DNR. And we intend to use that property likely differently it is, is open space, but it's an important component to this. And it became very apparent uh, yesterday morning when Nick's planning staff and I met with representatives from the bank that our master planned project and our downtown sub area plan process aren't meshed as well as they need to be. And uh, it's going to need some additional scope added to the GGLO body of work. And the bank agreed that they'd be willing to share in that expense with us. And likely that expense will get split three ways because I think the residential developer is going to want a seat at the table too. So we're, we're working on that piece and we'll be bringing that back. But I just want to share it with you. Um, this is an exciting step, but my goodness, we have a lot of questions to answer and we have a lot of agreements that I need to bring back to you guys uh, to get our community and our city council uh, comfortable uh, with where where we're heading with this thing. So that's a long story related to a, a letter of intent. So Mr. Clausen. Mr. Mayor, I move to authorize the mayor to sign the letter of intent with Kitsap Bank related to the purchase of 619 Bay Street. Second. Okay. A motion by Councilman Kacharty. Was that second by Councilman Kacharty? Clausen made the motion, or was yes. it Rosen? Clausen. No. Clausen made the motion. Kacharty made the second. Kacharty made the second. I'm, okay. I'm just, I think. I got my C's mixed up there, maybe, but uh, okay. I'm just confirming so Brandy gets it right in the minutes. So uh, a motion and a second. Further discussion? Yes, I, I would only. Okay, Council Member Ashby and then Council Member Lucarelli. Yeah, I just, um, again, I appreciate the work that has gone into this and the letter of intent does allow us to start negotiating with Kitsap Bank for the purchase of this property. And I know that the purchase and sale agreement will be a complicated um, document. But my question is, can you describe um, how we're going to do the negotiations? I know when we do our labor negotiations, we have a team, uh, typically our finance director 
and our uh, human resource manager and an attorney are all part of those negotiations. So how do you envision the negotiations for this purchase and sale to be processed? Uh, well, obviously we're going to invite, uh, involve our city attorney, uh, Ms. Archer. Uh, Ms. Mr. Bond has been intricately involved in this and it involves money. So I'm assuming our, 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 uh, our finance director. Uh, you know, when we started this process in the site selection, we said we would have a ch monthly check-in with, uh, with, the, with the economic development committee. And, I, and I, wherever I have an opportunity, I think I wanna report on what's going on with this process when each and every one of the committee, committee when it's, committees when it's appropriate. But I think as far as uh, checking in, uh, I think it's gonna be potentially the finance committee and, and, then, and then bringing it back uh, once we've negotiated an agreement to the full council, obviously, because you'll need to approve it. But we are doing a, a team approach as we do with our labor negotiations. It's similar, but I, it's not necessarily the same. I don't think we're going to sit down in a room like we do in our, in our labor degree negotiations. I think Charlie's probably going to, probably has a, a, a template document that's a purchase and sale. And, and uh, but there's some unique provisions like the leased land, or if, if we were, lucky and got um, what we're asking for from the legislature, a million dollars to buy this real estate. And, you know, it's realistically, the bank is going to be in that building for another couple of years. Will they build their other building? You know, the legislature re could require that I spend their money sooner than that. And in that scenario, I've had conversations already with the bank that they're willing to, to sell it to us and lease it back. So there could be some unique provisions in that. And, and I'm really seeing Charlie being the, the lead to that, but we're not going, I'm going to need your buy-in in the provisions that are in this document um, before it's agreed to. Did I answer that better the second time? Right. Again, it's going to be a cooperative effort on the city's part um, with various departments coming together with their specific um, specialties and and input and I'm assuming that we will also have council will offer some parameters for the committee to work within um, much as we do with the labor negotiations so that you don't have a blank checkbook um, <laughs> you know. I, I think ultimately the appraisal is going to determine the value and, and there won't be you know, that's probably going to be our offer. But before we make that offer, of course, we're going to check in and say, here's, here's the, and hopefully we don't have a, an, oh my God moment. It's worth that. Um, my understanding also is because this is a real estate transaction, those conversations that council will have will be an executive session. Is that correct? Yes, they should. For them to consider the minimum price of real estate to be offered for sale or lease is something we could discuss. Um, a purchase price is not necessarily something we can discuss, um, but the so I, I believe that there's a potential we can we can have a conversation about the selection of the site and the the terms of the agreement. Um, that's typically my practice. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Lucarelli. Um, just a small point, and I'm not sure about this, but it seems that there's a redundancy in the first line on behalf of the city of Port Orchard, and then you repeat or it. On behalf of the city, do you does that is that supposed to be like that? I found that a little awkward. In the letter we're at, the very first sentence it's it's a small thing. On behalf of the city of Port Orchard, I'm pleased to submit this letter of intent. On behalf of yeah, it's it, you're right. It is. I'm going to blame Charlie. It is a typo. I apologize. <laughs> well, I just think a redundancy. Yeah. yeah. The bank the bank approved it though. Okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we we did repeat ourselves. <laughs> Thank you. It is redundant. Council Member Chang. I have a general question about the acknowledgement on the second page where it, we're saying that the we, the purchaser, where the seller will require ample time to design and construct and relocate. And, and I understand that we want to certainly collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the time frame, we know what our time frame is because it's been a public process. 
Um, are you aware of the bank working on, you know, will their time frame mesh with ours or, or are they starting from scratch? I mean, I assume they've, they've been working on this. No, we had a, we had a, one of our first meetings yesterday with them uh, is in, the, in the planning staff and um, we've got a lot of work to do. That, that's so they're, they're, uh, there's a lot of work to be done. They've got to design and permit and build a building. And we've got to make sure that the provisions in our code and our master plan work with what's proposed in this master plan for the housing and the community center and their headquarters. So we've, we've got a lot of work to do. So the first domino is basically them exiting their building before we can construct ours. Yes, they're not planning on leaving their building until their new building is constructed. Yes, Councilmember Picciardi. I was just going to say we uh, discussed this issue at the finance committee earlier today, and you know one of the important things that I think all of us need to pay attention to is obviously never lose sight of our of our agreement with uh, with, with Kitsap Facilities District to make sure where everything is is just kind of um, lined up with everything that we're obligated to. Um, you know, this is going to be a very complicated process because of all of the moving parts. And so, Charlie, if you have a template for this, this PSA, I'd love to see it. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think, you know, and, and John Clausen said it best, you know, at the, at the finance committee meeting of just, we just need to make sure we're not out over, you know, over our skis and making sure that we're just paying attention to all of these different moving parts and we're not, you know, committing to anything. Um, I love the idea of this LOI because it, you know, it allows us to move forward without, you know, a, a binding document in place. And so I just think, you know, on behalf of the entire council, let's just, you know, really pay attention to every step of this process and just to make sure we don't get over our skis. And uh, I, I like that we have the different checks and balances in place to discuss it, debate it, and make sure that we uh, are doing everything in the, in the appropriate manner. Great comment, Council Member Cajardi. And it's also important, and I know I've said this multiple times and I'm gonna say it a number more times too. Our commitment to the Public Facilities District is a three-legged stool. The community center, the bank headquarters, and the housing. And we've gotta deliver on all three elements or we don't get the money to build our community center. So um, we've got a 12, mil we got $12 million at stake uh, from in public facilities dollars uh, and so we've got to get it right and we've got to deliver on all of the elements, including obviously the bank's headquarters. That's, that's the, that's where it starts. Here, if I could just add one point, yes. um, I just wanted to clarify for council too, by retaining our firm, you get the full, you know, scope of our expertise. And we have a number of real estate attorneys who are specifically, um, will specifically assist with drafting that, creating that template and drafting that template that, template again is the wrong word since this is such a unique arrangement but um you know one of the the partners that i have is exclusively with real estate assisted with the kitsap county bethel property transaction earlier this year and they um they'll be assisting with the drafting of these documents as well so wonderful other questions comments we have a motion and a second on the floor to uh, allow the mayor to sign the letter of intent with kitsap bank uh, for the, uh, for the bank's property. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Hearing none, I will sign that letter tomorrow. All right, we, uh, our last business item is the approval of the December 15th, 2020 council meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So Mayor, I move that we approve the minutes for the December 15th meeting. Second. A motion by Council Member Clausen, second by Council Member Rosa Pepe. And I believe I will have one abstention by Council Member Ashby this evening. So all in favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And one abstention. Council Member Ashby. All right, we are to our sole discussion item, which is the 2020 Chest Festival of Chimes and Lights, which was like no other Chimes and Lights <laughs> Festival, and hopefully it won't be repeated. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, 
Brandy, is it possible for me to have a screen share? And I am trying to do a little a PowerPoint presentation. Bear with me. Uh, yes, and I just made you co-host so you can share. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Can everybody see this? No. Nice. No? Okay, then I'm doing it wrong. Let's get through this real quick here. So sorry. What do I need to do differently? Um, Sometimes you have to select a doc. If you have multiple documents open, you may have to select that document that you want to share. Okay. Oh, please. You know what? You, you might have to stop sharing and then start over from scratch. Sometimes once you get in, it doesn't allow you to be nimble. So you could stop and then start over again and try it again. Okay, so I do screen share and then I go to my presentation. I can't get to it. I'm Was sorry. the presentation already open on your computer? It's on my desktop. But is it open? Is, is no. it So open it first. Try that. Okay. And then stop sharing and then restart sharing and see if it if it brings that up as an option to share with that file already open. It's got to be open on your screen. Okay, so the it blocks it blocks all of the other here. I'm yes. you know I uh, it does? It's supposed to? Yes. Can you see this now? No. We see okay. It. I see a message saying that the host disabled participant screen sharing. I don't know which host it's referring to. Okay. So you know what? It looks like I'm not going to be able to share, which is really sad because I spent a whole lot of time on this. Hold it up. Um, Hold it up you, in front of your screen. Or your, your hey, hey, Cindy, would you like to email it to Brandy real quick? Yeah. Oh, I think I could do that. Okay, why don't we move on with whatever else needs to be done, and I'll try doing that. Okay. Thank we'll, you so much. And we'll uh, move on to committee reports and the mayor's report, and then we'll circle back to this. Thank you. All right. Uh, finance committee is first, and it met this evening. Councilmember Clausen, you want to have a report for us? Sure, be happy to. Uh, Noah provided a breakdown of our sales tax receipts, which uh, brings us through December of 2020, which I'm happy to report um, turned out in a, a positive format. We're uh, just shy of a um, million dollars over for the biennium. Um, and I think we were, what, about seven, almost 8% um, for the year. So from that standpoint, it went well. We also, uh, Noah shared with us that he has been working with uh, uh, one of our uh, suppliers, if you will, to develop an app that will help uh, community members to uh, pay their uh, utility bills and such online and uh, the mayor was our guinea pig in the test. He shared that they took money from him and they have not shut off his water yet so we're claiming success with the uh, performance of it. Um, we asked if Noah could email out the information to each of us so that we too could uh, be a little bit of a guinea pig while he's working on a rollout strategy uh, for the community so that they can use it. And the mayor has reported that it was uh, very user-friendly and easy to use once you got it set up for yourself and uh, uh, it's doing well. The, uh, the other thing we, we talked a little bit about is that historically the finance committee signs off on basically the uh, expenditure list at each meeting, but 
since we've been with COVID and doing this virtually, we haven't really done it for a year. Noah reported that in his research, it's not really a uh, requirement uh, anywhere that he can find other than it's a council resolution that is adopted that requires us to sign off on it. The only thing we're doing is signing off that we looked at it. It really requires uh, full council action, which for example, tonight we did when we approved the consent agenda, we as a council approved and that's what Noah really needs. So we were talking about um, where the three of us will go in and sign all of the documents for 2020, but um, we're going to be bringing forward a revised resolution that allows a process for which the committee will uh, receive the document and basically acknowledge it. It will still follow the normal process of coming to the full council for approval uh, in each of our meetings. We also talked quite a bit about a uh, formula that was presented to us um, on the um, sewer and water credit. If a developer was to provide um, the infrastructure necessary and how we would uh, treat that investment and provide them credit, it's coming to the full council next week at the work study. So. Uh, we'll be able to share way more detail. Noah and the mayor have developed some examples of how that would actually work. And uh, I think the three of us on the committee were um, supportive of the process and bringing it forward, obviously, um, for uh, uh, the full council's discussion. The <clears throat> one of the, well, as Sean mentioned earlier, we also talked at length about the uh, letter of intent that we just uh, dealt with earlier and had a number of questions in that regard. Um, there was another action that the committee had requested following the uh, salary survey that we did for all of City Hall. We asked if the uh, uh, Debbie could do a quick look at the council's uh, compensation and how it related to uh, the PERS retirement system and what would be required if, in fact, we were uh, able to be in the PERS retirement system. Basically, it came down to uh, everybody hold on to your socks. We're not making minimum wage, but we all kind of acknowledged that that was uh, uh, something that we were aware of when we signed up for the job and we hopefully we're not here because of the uh, exorbitant pay that we don't receive. So uh, essentially it showed that we're, um, we're being paid, I think fairly compared to our uh, fellow jurisdictions around and probably a little bit better than some uh, other than the data that we had for the other jurisdictions might be a little bit dated. Uh, so the committee's recommendation <clears throat> is basically to not do anything with it we're fine with what we have now. And even though uh, we won't qualify for PERS uh, credit and retirement, uh, once again, we're here to do the community's work and not uh, try to retire from this job. So we did ask to have that document sent out to the rest of the council. We're not proposing any action with it. We just want you all to have that same information. If any of you want to bring it up for further discussion, and then we'll have to schedule it before either a work study or a council meeting. So that's pretty much it. And then the mayor shared just a couple things. Uh, we talked briefly about some grant funding that we received, not necessarily, um, although we applied for, I think you said five different grants. We got one that, uh, uh, out of one to five, we got number five. So uh, as a result, we may be faced with some budget adjustments before uh, too much longer so that we can move the project forward. And essentially we receive funding for the construction of a roundabout at Bethel and Lincoln, I think it is mayor, if I remember correctly. Although he mentioned with wetlands, although it hasn't been designed yet, uh, it might be our first peanut versus a roundabout. 
uh, but we will be probably obligated to do the design work and then we can use the grant funding for the construction. So we'll have to do some budget adjustments for that, but that's uh, uh, yet to come. <clears throat> and then he shared briefly with more to come on um, the expenses that have been generating uh, almost daily by DEM as a result of the COVID pandemic and all the extra work that they're doing and that there's going to be uh, some needed adjustments in the funding to support DEM and that um, he shared the formula for which the city of Port Orchard would typically contribute to it and it's a population based formula. We would be about 6% of the obligation and the obligation, um, the majority of the extra costs are being covered by FEMA. Uh, we here locally would be responsible for about 25% of the costs. So the city would be responsible for 6% of that 25%, but we don't have solid numbers uh, tied to it at this point, other than um, Mayor shared that it could be somewhere between Twenty-five and three thousand dollars a month for through September, I believe it was. So, more to come. Hopefully, they will also be able to secure grant funding that might have an effect in lowering that. But we'll have to wait and see. That was pretty much it, committee. Did I miss anything or forget anything? No, great job, Mayor. Do you have anything that you want to add? Or? No, other than when I get to my mayor's report, I got the, the, the worst case numbers and they're a lot more than 3,000. So, uh, well, don't, don't share that with us tonight. So thank uh, you. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Econ thank you, John, for your report. Economic development and tourism hasn't met. Uh, the, there weren't any agenda items and their next meeting is scheduled for February 8th. Utilities hasn't met, but they are meeting on January 19th. And the meeting date for the sewer advisory committee hasn't been set yet. Land use had a meeting scheduled for tomorrow, but I believe that's been canceled due to a lack of agenda items. So they will be meeting in February. Uh, transportation meets January 26th. And lodging tax says it's gonna meet in February. That's correct. Is that correct? Okay and festival and chimes and lights we're going to try to get to you soon so do you want to give that uh slide if you, brandy did you get that powerpoint is that a yes brandy do you want to share that on your screen and then maybe cindy walks through it and then i'll give the mayor's report brandy can you yeah okay so um Port Archer's non-event in a COVID restricted year, our Festival of Chimes and Lights basically looked like this. Next. Our Christmas tree. <laughs> a majority of Chimes and Lights this year was our Christmas tree and the decorations, the holiday tree. Um, on the left you see, Bill spent some time looking for the right tree and it transformed into a gorgeous tree. We are still looking at having a live tree each year when we priced an artificial tree um, with their shelf life of five to seven years, it still pays to go with a, a live tree. Next. The decorated tree contest, which is really the main event. Uh, we had the following winners, they are on our website. Um, it was just mentioning the first place winners um, the honorable mention, which is Port Orchard Helpers, also received the POPSAS People's Choice Award. Next. I don't see the mayor's tree on that list. I know, right? It didn't. So, so the best vintage tree, uh, Port Orchard Market. Next. Uh, most creative tree, many pass acupuncture. These, these photos don't do them justice, so sorry. Next. And the best business representative tree was Scott McLennan's hardware. Next. So looking down Bay Street with all the trees lit and the icicle lights, really beautiful. Um, 
Our suggestion as a committee that we keep uh, the icicle lights up at least through the entire month of January. If you look down the streets right now, it's very gloomy. Next. Giving trees were a tradition that was started last year and has grown. Um, Councilman Clausen sponsored the tree for the Friendship Club and many, there were probably at least four or five trees with giving to, as giving trees and people really did take things from them a lot. Next. We even had some memorial trees. This one stood out, um, it was lovely. Uh, for Candy Kingston um, in memory of a, a nice woman. Next. So special thanks to Kisette Bank, the Port of Bremerton, and all the businesses who helped to make Port Orchard glow merry and bright. Next. The suggestion for the committee is that we go back to viewing neighborhood displays for the community decorating. Um, the neighborhood displays individual homes and businesses, even though we didn't do um, we didn't do drive throughs this year because of COVID and because we were thinking that we would go to just having photographs sent in to judge from really isn't working very well. And so the committee is hoping we can go back to the council and whomever um, driving around through the neighborhoods to view and judge. We hope in the future that Port Orchard will someday be known as the Little City of Lights. Next. The Fathoms Royalty spent a great deal of time downtown this year promoting the tree decorating contest and we thank them for it. Next. And Port Orchard wished everybody holiday cheer to all through the beautiful displays all around. Again, special thanks to Public Works. This photo, of course, doesn't do it justice, but it was beautiful. And um, we had so many comments uh, of people just really enjoying um, our displays. So thank you very much. Thank you, Cindy. I just want to acknowledge, I, you, you put your heart and soul into this every year. And uh, I, I just want to personally acknowledge you that, that uh, and thank you for, for all the hard work you do and, and for this festival. Thank you. I'll second that. <laughs> I was going to say I'll third that with the ditto. Uh, uh, several times our grandkids were over and we took them down to see the lights and it was just beautiful. It's, uh, it's been a wonderful idea for what three or four years now with the adopted trees and it just keeps getting better and better. Thank you. Thank everyone for contributing. All right. Thank you for your report, Cindy. Uh, outside agencies and committees, Beck, that's primarily you and I. Do you have anything? Yeah, we haven't met since um, mid-December. Okay. So I, I don't have anything new to report. We should have reports in February when we get back active again. Okay. I've got my, uh, I had my Super Tuesday here uh, last week. And uh, so I'll give you what I know. Um, and this public health board, um, I was the chair last year of that agency, and that was a gift that just kept on giving all year long. And uh, fortunately, last week, I got to hand the, uh, the gavel off to Commissioner Garrido for that agency. And uh, what we heard yesterday, and it's already probably dated information about the vaccine rollout, the, the quote from the public health nurse that's in charge of that were, was, we're building the plane while we're flying it. Is was the analogy she used. Uh, and um, Kitsap, as of last week, had administered 40% of the vaccines that it had received. And that was the fifth best performance in the state. So we're, uh, I, I, we're it's going to get better, um, but we're, we're stumbling and bumbling a bit in, in administering and in getting the vaccine rolled out and, and administered. Um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, so, and the four counties that were ahead of us were all much smaller counties. So it's, it, the, the larger counties, it's, it's becoming, it's, it's much, much more difficult. So I know Mr. Clausen has been involved in making a facility available in the last week, um, for the public health, uh, district, uh, to help in this matter. And, uh, there's just, there's a lot of work going on to it and we're going to get there, but. Um, the first few weeks uh, weren't going as planned. I, I'll, I'll 
definitely share that. Um, Department of Emergency Management, Mr. Clausen shared, yes, there's a funding formula for this. And the information I got today at the board meeting gave me the low side, you know, that, that they felt that this was gonna be. And I said, I'm not gonna go to my city council with the low side number. I need the worst case, I need the range. What's the, the worst case scenario and the best case scenario? And in the best case scenario, so last year there was all this, these grants and federal money and we're likely to get more of that, but right now we don't have it, okay? And so that 25%, DEM is covering, excuse me, uh, FEMA is covering 75% of this. Our countywide responsibility in the worst case scenario is $1.7 million. Uh, at our 6%, that, so that's our 25%. Our 6% of that would be $102,000 uh, January through September. In the best case scenario that we get the grants, it's about $46,000. Uh, and some of this has to do with, so there was, what was shared with me earlier was about $2,000. That's only the employee side of it. There's uh, one-time expenditures related to um, equipment, and materials that uh, weren't shared with me earlier. So um, more to come on this and I hope we get uh, more federal aid to reduce this expenditure. But I, I believe strongly that uh, we need to pay our proportionate share of this emergency response that we need to be doing the testing that we're doing. We need to help uh, with the, with the uh, vaccination sites and, and those are, a, a, a role that we need to be involved in and, and fund our, our proportional share with, share, share of. And uh, I hope you share that uh, sentiment uh, with me in, in, in the regards to that. And I probably add these as I get this more formalized, probably as a discussion item at our council meeting um, on the 20, whatever the last meeting of the month is, just so that I get, uh, get, get some buy-in from you guys you know, on this process. Um, so South uh, Sea Transit, uh, I am now the proud chair of the transit, Kitsap Transit for I think my third time uh, is in my time at, uh, at the city and uh, where I understand that Southworth Ferry is very close. Um, we have a boat and we need an agreement with Washington State Ferries to, to, to launch out of that. Uh, out of Southworth and it should happen sometime this month. Is that an accurate statement, Mr. Clausen? No. <clears throat> not anymore? Okay. No, I, it's not. I said the first quarter. First uh, quarter, okay. And there's additional items such as paint on the parking lot that we have not had the best weather to do. So there's a couple things that we need to complete first as well. So first quarter and some paint needs to go on the ground so that we know where to park the buses. So, so all right. Uh, I'm also involved in the Gorst Coalition, which is trying, we, we believe the Navy is a part of this solution and, and trying to get federal dollars to, to solve Gorst. Um, their ask, you know, we put $5,000 in the budget and that's likely what they're gonna get, but the ask from the coalition was for us to contribute uh, $50,000. And uh, I haven't seen the ILA that we saw at Transit. Nobody sh has sent it to me formally yet. So as soon as I get that, I will uh, be happy to share it with the council and uh, have our legal counsel review that ILA and uh, potentially have you guys uh, adopt that. But uh, I found it a little alarming that uh, the number of 50,000 and they've softened the language in the draft we saw at transit from what I initially saw that required the $50,000 contribution. And it was more along the lines of you could pay what you can afford to pay. So more to come on that. Um, I'm required to report policy changes to you and in particular around uh, you know, uh, personnel policies. So. Uh, we've been, Debbie has been working to update a number of policies, uh, removal of the now expired uh, Families First uh, Coronavirus Response Act from our lead policy. 
title updates to reflect uh, Debbie's promotion from HR coordinator to HR manager. I also corrected a, a number of uh, other oversights and past titles related to finance director to, and treasurer, uh, administrative uh, network administrator. It was our current IT person and it was previously a land technician. Um, also updates to the uh, deputy police chief's job description uh, for that position we just filled there. And today I saw updated job description for our police officers that we're getting uh, ready to recruit for and just reflecting what's currently in state law um, for requirements for a police officer. Uh, that's all I have for the, uh, for the mayor's report and we'll roll to uh, Mr. Clausen. Yeah, I just want to share some information. Um, Kitsap Transit took over the operation, uh, actually driving the vessels between Port Orchard and Bremerton of our ferry service there. And my normal response when my Marine Service Director comes in to tell me the news of what's going on is it's a boat. Any of you that have owned boats, you probably can understand. We have three vessels devoted to the Port Orchard Bremen and Service. The Carlisle is currently sitting on the beach in Port Townsend with just a bit over a million dollars worth of refurbishment work underway. I think they have, last report I received, they finished taking all of the bad stuff off and they're now starting to put all of the good stuff on. So we probably won't see the Carlisle until March. The Waterman, which is the new electric hybrid vessel, the first hybrid passenger ferry in the Puget Sound, is experiencing some mechanical issues and it's tied up at the dock and not usable, um, which leaves us the Admiral Pete, which doesn't, because of COVID and the reduced capacity, is not meeting the needs. And we know that. Uh, you will probably see next week, first of the week, possibly even the latter part of this week, uh, one of Argosy's Good Time 3 vessels. We're going to be chartering that boat to uh, provide some additional capacity. Um, if, if we had a problem with the Admiral Pete, which I remind everybody it's a boat, um, we're completely out of boats that we can use for Port Orchard. So that's why we're chartering one of uh, Argosy's boats to get in here that one with two boats will have the capacity we need. Uh, but in the remote chance that the Admiral Pete goes down, uh, we'll still have a vessel that we can utilize to run back and forth. We looked at the possibility of putting bus service on to supplement the capacity uh, the travel time is rather extensive. Instead of a 10 minute crossing, you're looking at more like a 25 minute bus ride. And with the reduced capacity because of COVID, we probably have to put four, well, actually upwards of six buses on uh, just to provide the uh, capacity necessary uh, just during the commute period. So that's not really feasible. That's why we're doing that. Charter. So I wanted to share that with the council so that when you see an RGC boat running back and forth between Port Richard and Bremerton, you'll know it's supposed to be there. John, have you been running uh, from Port, Port from Annapolis to Bremerton, or have you? Has that been suspended? No, we we suspended that primarily because um, with the reduced capacity that I had to put on the boats because of COVID. Uh, we took the Annapolis boat and moved it over to Port Orchard so that we have a boat leaving every 15 minutes instead of once every 30 minutes. Oh. By having a more frequent departure uh, during the commute hour, uh, we were able to bring in the additional capacity that we needed. And we bus people from Annapolis that yeah. park in the Annapolis dock down to Port Orchard and back. So okay. that's why you don't see a boat yet out at Annapolis. But that... 15 minute service is predicated on John having two boats and he doesn't have two boats. He has one boat. Did, did I mention it's a boat? So, yes. <laughs> like five times. 
All right, thank you for that update, John. Yep. All right, uh, department directors uh, reports. Uh, Brandy, do you have anything to share with us this evening? No, just happy new year, that's all I have. One uh, thing that uh, Brandy and I are looking into at our Glass Transit Board meeting, we talked about changing the version of Zoom that we have. And John, it's called Web something. It's a different version of Zoom that makes the council, uh, and we don't have a lot of public coming, but it still allows the public to view, but they aren't on the same screen as us. Um, if we had, uh, you know, sometime this year, we're gonna talk about utility rates, and I bet we get a lot of people coming and if we're still meeting in this fashion we'd have screens and screens and screens of um you know participants and so uh, i found out at when we were talking about this at the transit we're the only city in the county that's not using that form of zoom uh so we're looking into that and we'll likely make that change next month is what i'm with next month's meetings and It'll work, work the same for us. Uh, it's the same link, yeah, it's a link, we go into it. The public just has a different link. And then when we go to do public comment, Brandy will um, act like Scotty and beam them into the meeting and then beam them back out to the other planet. So um, it's pretty slick, so. Um, and that, and the reason, you know, other agencies have had problem with people uh, you know, people have been very respectful in our meetings, but that hasn't been the case or the experience in other jurisdictions and people bomb their meetings and then hijack their meetings. So, uh, so best to be, I guess, proactive. Charlie, do you have anything to share? Yes, just briefly, uh, the governor's proclamations, I'm sure you've all been keeping tabs, um, but the open public meetings proclamation expires on January 19th. Uh, it, the most recent proclamation does modify certain terms of the pre-existing proclamations, but the oeuvre remains the same as long as we're in a, um, an area that continues to have a, a, an uptick in um, uh, rates related to the pandemic, then you're still, we continue to be prohibited from having in-person meetings, um, but the governor will revisit that on January 19th. Um, and the other uh, key proclamation that can, that is was extended is the um, shut off of residential customer prohibition related to utilities. And that was actually extended to April 30th this year. Thanks. Thank you. And I see council member Diener joined us. So welcome. Uh, Mr. Bond. Nothing to report. Okay. Chief Brown. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, actually, this middle of Donna's second week and she's, uh, she's doing fantastic already, but uh, she's definitely adjusting to a, a different pace and style of work. Um, we're continuing to kind of plug away on accreditation. We're approaching the 60% mark and uh, a lot of that will probably speed up a little bit. Um, we did have Stanley Security in this week installing the upgrades to our property room for uh, uh, internal surveillance cameras, key card access and an alarm. So we're plugging right along, so thank you. Mr. Crocker, you have anything to share? I got nothing to report tonight, thank you. Okay, Mr. Dorsey. I have nothing. Nothing, I, and I see Chief Fawcett from Fire District 7. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Do you have any uh, words of wisdom to share with us? I don't, I thought my video, there it is. Uh, no, thanks and uh, happy new year. Looking forward to another great year and uh, just keep plugging away. Wonderful. All right. We have a meeting later in the week. Looking forward to talking to you. And I think you're aware, as Mr. Bond shared with me, we got a little reprieve on the, the building code. We've got a few more months to work on that. So it's not uh, as urgent as it once was. So That's good. That's good. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Anything for the good of the order? Council Member Rosepepe. A couple of things. I wanted to thank the chief for sharing the strategic plan to everyone. Uh, I thought it was really good and uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Mark, you didn't comment on the uh, selection of the, I know it'll come later to council on the uh, selection of the design committee for the uh, Lincoln roundabout, but that was done this week. And 
uh, very interesting, uh, especially since we got some funding for that. And last of all, I'd like to thank the AWC, the county commissioners, and especially our mayor uh, for the letter that was sending out, that was sent out condemning the violence and uh, calling for peaceful transition and civility. I think that's uh, always important to do. And we had uh, a very interesting last week. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Councilmember Chang? Just wanted to mention that the severe weather shelter at the corner of Sydney and Kitsap is actually open this evening. Uh, despite the limited capacity due to COVID requirements, it is still operating. Uh, it lost a lot of volunteers because many of the available volunteers are in the um, vulnerable age groups. Uh, however, they did find a way to fund some additional monitors. Uh, the volunteer hours are longer. They went from five hours to seven and a half. And last night they had eight people. So even though it's not freezing, uh, the shelter is open when there's an inch or more of rain. And I think it's, 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 they've, it, it's great that they're open because there are a lot of pe people who are not quite so wet this evening. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks for sharing that. Councilor Clausen. Yes, just a quick question, Jay. I don't know if you went into City Hall to pick up your token of appreciation or not, but if you haven't, bring a hand truck. And second thing, Mr. Mayor, just didn't want you to forget about citizens comment for you adjourn. We've got a citizen comment and then we also have an executive session planned. So we're not, we're, our, our work isn't done this evening, but thank you for uh, reminding me. And if I could just two housekeeping issues, Councilmember Lucarelli and Councilmember Diener, there's still that resolution to sign for uh, uh, retired uh, Deputy Chief Schuster, um, then we're, we're needing your two signatures and then we're done. So I will be there tomorrow. I, that totally slipped my mind. So I'll be there tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Greatly appreciated. All right. We are to our, la our second citizen comment uh, period. Is there anyone wishing to address the city council? All right. Hearing none, I am going to uh, close the citizen comment period. We are headed into an executive session pursuant to RCW 4230-1101-I. The city will hold an executive session regarding pending litigation. The, the city council will not take any action after uh, the executive session, but I will return to adjourn, adjourn the meeting. So, uh, we don't see um how long was that executive session for mayor uh charlie how long do we need i would say 10 minutes 10 minutes okay and chief brown i don't need you sure call nick whether you want to uh nick, come along nick, or not so I think, but, uh, I think noah and and mark uh should be there so yeah, and looks like all the members of the public are gone. Can you stop the recording, Brandy? Yep.